New Tales from the Borderlands with a 399 all-time peak player count. Even the old Tales from the Borderlands had an over 8,000 all-time peak on Steam charts. I think the Borderlands series has finally taken a giant hit from the whole Wonderlands DLC fiasco, and I can't blame players for dropping off so hard. I can't lie, I have not played a Borderlands game since the Coiled Captors launch, I didn't play any of the Wonderlands DLC after that, and I did also not play New Tales from the Borderlands. At least until this last week, I was playing some BL3 again. Now in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Next Makers, 2K's content creator program to promote Borderlands and some of their other titles using social media influencers and how they are not only using deceptive tactics, but they are also underpaying content creators for what they really want. Now, I have some insight on this since I was once in the Next Makers program and I left. So really, what we are going to be breaking down in this video is the Next Makers damage slash money formulas, why it's bad for gaming communities overall to have major content creators inside of these programs because it builds bias, and also, there's no real benefit to these so-called perks. So let's get straight into it. So first things first, let's go ahead and talk about 2K Games Next Maker program. And specifically, we're going to be talking about the Borderlands stream team. But what are the perks as a content creator and what builds bias once you're on this team? And it's listed in the 2K Next Maker tweet right here. There's dev access, exclusive info, and affiliate opportunities. Now dev access is going to give you access to talking to these devs to submit feedback while also quote unquote making you buddy buddy with them as we have heard from some of these next makers before exclusive info this is pretty much pre-release sort of stuff early access stuff like that and affiliate opportunities which is essentially uh paid streams now first things first when it comes to next makers Let's go ahead and talk about what these guys really want. Now you'll notice in the Borderlands community, we have what's called a stream team. So it seems that many of the paid opportunities are on Twitch. However, I just went ahead and pulled up this statista.com, you know, stats to prove what I'm trying to say here. And what that is, is what is the most popular social media platform for gamers? And that is gonna be YouTube with 60% of gamers using YouTube to watch their favorite games. And down here on number six is Twitch with only 30% of gamers watching their games. Now, why does 2K Next Makers only have a stream team in Borderlands and not a YouTube program to kind of get YouTube videos out there? And that is a two-folded reason. Number one, we're gonna go ahead and break down the Twitch and YouTube damage formulas. So how much do they pay you for a sponsored stream and what could they be paying you for sponsored YouTube videos? So when it comes to Twitch, uh, basically the damage formula is your average viewer count times about 80 cents times hours paid for, which a sponsored stream is usually paid for four hours. So for someone like me, I averaged just over 100 viewers on Twitch multiply that by 80 cents, multiply that by four hours. I could have on average made about $350 per sponsored stream. Now let's just give an example in Killer6, since he's a large Borderlands content creator, he had about a thousand viewers in his stream, multiply that by 80 cents, multiply that by four hours. Now, obviously I don't know his contract, this is all estimated, but he could have expected to make on average about $3,200 for a sponsored stream. And finally, let's give an example of a non-Borderlands creator like Co Carnage or Dr. Lupo, who did do sponsored streams for 2K. They had about 10,000 viewers, multiply that by 80 cents, multiply that by four hours. They were getting paid about 30 grand to do these sponsored streams. So let's just go ahead and focus on that $3,000 number for a sponsored stream for someone like K6. And once again, that's estimated and on average. And let's go ahead and show just a quick example of a YouTube damage formula. So a YouTube damage formula is pretty simple. It's pretty much anywhere from $10 to $50 per thousand views. This rate is completely negotiable, but let's just go ahead and aim at the low end of this. So Killer Sixes, Wonderland's brutally honest review, got 700,000 views. Now I will say this is a lot for his channel a lot of the times, you know, he can get hundreds of thousands of views, but this video popped off. 
So let's just use this one. So we take 700,000, divide it by 1,000 because it's per 1,000 views, and then multiply that, and let's just do the low end of $10. He could have negotiated about $7,000 for this one video, and this guy does daily uploads. You know, for something like 200,000 views, divide by 1,000, multiply by 10. For the low end, he could easily negotiate $2,000 for a sponsored video, and this guy posts daily uploads. So that is the first factor for why uh, Borderlands and Gearbox has a stream team rather than a YouTube team. And that is because YouTube videos are much more expensive over the long run. You know, you can easily negotiate, say, three YouTube videos, but when it comes to Twitch, they only offered sponsored streams on drops. So they'll offer one sponsored stream when a brand new DLC comes out or when a brand new game launches, kind of to build hype that day to get more sales on the opening day. Now, the second factor to this is the difference between the Twitch and the YouTube community. When you have early access on Twitch, it's super hype for your viewership. And, you know, a lot of viewers want to go to those sort of early access streamers. Now, not all of the streams are usually early access. A lot of them are actually on the first day after the game comes out. But my point is on Twitch, doing a sponsored stream is way more accepted. Now on YouTube, and I pulled up this YouTube video for a specific reason, is because it is titled Brutally Honest Review. He technically was not sponsored for this video, and he technically could make the argument that this video is brutally honest. And you know, knowing K6, it probably is for the most part pretty honest, um, given that Wonderlands did have a good launch and he gave it a really good score. And what we are gonna be showing with some of the other YouTube videos I pulled up is let's go ahead and just look at new tales from the Borderlands. So when I type in new tales from the Borderlands into the YouTube search, for, search bar, we get Eruption Fang, New Tales from the Borderlands, so bad it's frustrating. It's Term X, what happened to the Borderlands series, rant. So obviously this is gonna be a bad review. We have Charlie can't handle the cringe and New Tales from the Borderlands. So it just seems like members of the stream team are leaving bad reviews. And let's just go ahead and pull up K6's New Tales from the Borderlands review, and he gives it a 7.25 out of 10. A pretty decent rating, but if you watch this video for another 30 seconds, he mentions how he would have given it an 8 out of 10 if he got a better ending. And if you go down to this description, he mentions how he did three streams for New Tales of the Borderlands. Part 3 was the only stream sponsored by 2K for what it's worth. I paid for the game and nothing was given to me to make this review. Yet, you have ties to the company, you are buddy-buddy with the devs, and this review happens to be the only good one out there for new tales of the Borderlands. Now let's go ahead and talk about the Wonderlands DLC fiasco, where the DLCs in Wonderlands are basically glorified side missions. Every single DLC in Wonderlands was about four different areas to five different areas of mobbing, a couple puzzles, and then a final boss. That is a glorified side mission. There are literally longer side missions than what these DLCs were worth. And we have Epic NNG, another stream team member, my thoughts on the Wonderlands DLC one drama. And it's kind of funny, he considers this drama, and you know, he talks about some good, he also criticizes a little bit, and maybe the reason he's calling it drama is because I posted a video the day before called Gearbox Shoots Themselves in the Foot yet again with DLC one coiled captors. And for me personally, I was off the stream team at this point and I was so disappointed with this DLC, I gave them a horrible title. <laughs> like I actually wanted it to be as bad as possible, like as negative as possible. And even if you watch this video, I was actually very forgiving and was honestly kind of nice in the video content itself. But then the next day, I posted a follow-up video called All Wonderlands Players Need to Do This, where I said, literally go drop support tickets saying how bad the DLC was because I was reading some of the content comments in my YouTube section. And even I paused the video at this one specific content of this guy named Frederick Cherry. He said, I hate how content creators can't truly speak their mind due to Gearbox loyalists coming after them. And you know, this kinda just goes towards the point of the stream team. Even though Epic NNG gave some criticism to DLC one, let's go ahead and see what he said about DLC three. The new Wonderlands DLC is actually good, all caps, question mark. And this is a 10 minute video of Epic NNG as if he is a parent 
and his toddler painted him a picture and he hung it up on the fridge and then <laughs> an art critic is there criticizing it and he's trying to convince this art critic why his toddler's picture on the fridge is actually a masterpiece and we have killer six with wonderlands the new dlc is really good talking about the third dlc again now what i will say in regards to this is okay you know wonderlands dlc 3 was better than the rest of them but in comparison to what it was still four areas of mobbing and a final boss with some puzzles was there a little more mechanics in the last one okay fine it was better than the rest of the dlcs but this is a glorified side mission and as soon as there's not quote unquote drama surrounding the dlc remember this is two dlcs later i didn't post any videos about this and at this point i think the player base dropped off so whoever was left was just willing to sort of eat this shit, and they got right back on their high horse of promoting the game now i want to point out a couple articles of gearbox says tiny tina's wonderlands is a major victory expect future entries in the franchise gearbox says tiny tina's wonderlands clearly a new franchise after shattering targets and I wanna focus on this right here, after shattering targets, AKA cash grab. Now, my problem with this is we have a game which I'm not gonna lie, it was great on launch, I loved it. However, we all know what makes a great Borderlands game. It's how much content is in there, how much end game is there, and the DLC. DLC is a major selling point for Borderlands games, and they were able to cash in on that major launch the 60 dollars game you know a lot of sales more than they were expecting i suppose but then they left us out to dry when it came to the dlc and i think the community is picking up on that considering that there was only a 399 peak player count on steam for new tales of the borderlands that is absolutely pitiful this is a franchise where borderlands 3 had what upwards of a hundred thousand player peak borderlands 2 had even more than that i think 130,000 player peak and this was what five years after launch so these games have you know the community obviously doesn't trust the company anymore and we can go ahead and just leave it at that now the last thing i want to talk about is myself my own youtube channel here are my analytics i was on the content creator team and I want to talk about how it truly did not benefit my career and my channel. So you notice this big spike here in viewership on my channel. And guess what? This was the drop of Mayhem 2.0. I put all my work into building my channel. I posted like what? Two videos a day, three videos a day for like two weeks in a row when Mayhem 2.0 came out. And I shattered my channel. I grew it at an alarming rate. I gained 1,400 subs in one day during Mayhem 2.0. I didn't join the stream team until about August when DLC 4 came out, maybe September, something like that. Now, what I want to basically now do is go to my videos and sort by popular. You can see my most popular video was called How to Get a Mayhem 10 Sandhawk. And this is the launch of Mayhem 2.0 before I was ever on the stream team. If we look at my top 12 videos, there's only one video here, Arms Race. I did have pre-release access to Arms Race, and this was a popular video of mine. I'm sure I gained a lot of subscribers from this, but my point is, out of my top 12 videos, there's only one with pre-release content. Let's look at the next 12. I don't see any pre-release content here. Yeah, nothing. Just more Mayhem 2.0 stuff, more build videos. This is a purple item people are interested in. Um, scrap trap farming scourge the invincible which once again here's another example this was when the guardian takedown dropped i did not have pre-release at this point in time i just recorded and posted my first fight against scourge the invincible now this is once again kind of low effort content because it was just a one take of my first ever fight unedited un anything even some of my top videos this was how to get a mayhem 10 sandhawk i put almost no editing into this and you can see for some of my other popular videos like the anarchy zane build the anarchy shaka new dedicated drop all i did was capitalize on the anarchy because this was a very hyped weapon given that it was based on gauge from borderlands 2 and i knew that so i capitalized on this idea and one final video I want to talk about is Mayhem 2.0 coming April 23rd. Everything you need to know. I posted this, what, a week before Mayhem 2.0? And it got 60,000 views. 
and I had no pre-release on this. However, one thing the community was talking about was the loot, and I focused on this in this video was um, at the time, you know how you can get like a Mayhem 10 weapon? Well, that wasn't in the game before Mayhem 2.0, and they dropped a teaser of a weapon that said like Mayhem 5 on it or something, and I talked about that in this video. I just took all the information and I released a pseudo kind of early access video, everything you need to know, even though I really didn't have all the information. And the uh, my the point I'm trying to make is as a gaming YouTuber, if you're a small content creator, you do not need pre-release information to grow your channel and make good content. You just have to be creative, you have to post consistently, and that's all you need. So you're not at a disadvantage if you don't join a content creator team like the Next Makers. And overall, I just think a content creator team, which there is clearly bias if you were on that team, given that the only good review for new Tales of the Borderlands on YouTube is from someone on the content creator team. Now, this isn't necessarily supposed to be a call out to that person. Was he being honest? Maybe in his head he was. But at the end of the day, I think we know as a community that if you get paid by a company, you are buddy buddy with some of their employees and you have pre-release information, you're going to end up being a little bit more biased than someone who doesn't. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys enjoyed those math breakdowns. Please subscribe to the channel if you are not. Drop a like on the video and have a great day. See you guys in the next one. I'm out.